Hi, I'm Emily Hui, the National Coordinator here at Oak Hills, and I am joined by Sawa Kasabian, the founder and director of Folsom's Hope, one of our ministry partners. And we want to share with you a little bit about how Folsom's Hope started and where they plan to go in the future. So Sawa, will you tell us a little bit about um, how this vision came to be? Sure. Um, so this vision definitely is uh, from the Lord. <laughs> And for me, it started as a personal journey about 13 years ago when my own kids who uh, were becoming school age were, our home school was Theodore Judah Elementary School and I was one of those parents who did not want my kids at that school like many other parents at that point in time. And so my older daughter did kindergarten and first grade at a different school in Folsom. And uh, as I was registering her for second grade and then my son for kindergarten, requesting school choice for both of them that year. His school choice form got denied and I got a letter from Theodore Judah indicating that he would be going to school there the following year. And so I had a choice to make at that point in time and really felt like this could be something from the Lord. And uh, in my own faith journey, I can see it as a crossroads of the first time I was willing to actually ask God if this was something from Him and felt that it definitely was, and so in faith, not because I really wanted to, I transferred my kids to Theodore Judah 13 school years ago, and um, it started me on a pretty incredible journey. The first six months really was just uh, opening my eyes and breaking my heart for the needs of the students at that school, and then really feeling about six months into it a, a definite call from the Lord about the fact that these kids needed a place to be after school and a vision of a, of a building to house them. Mm. Yeah. Right, well, one thing we talk about at Oak Hills is seeing and immersing, and it's clear that's what you did and how God led you. So 13 years ago, this vision started, and I know that you've had uh, lunchtime programs as well as after school programs for all 13 years. Uh, yeah, so 12 years of programming. Really? Of programming. Mm -hmm. And this year, kids are not on school campuses. <laughs> they are not. So can you tell us what uh, what does ministry look like for you right now? Yeah, that was a great question. And honestly, as recently as about four weeks ago, I didn't think ministry would look like much of anything this year. And a combination of not being on school sites, not being allowed to be on school sites, and our funding for our after school program specifically, which is our largest uh, money, uh, most money that we put toward that specific program, our funders didn't get funded to fund us. So we had a big slash in our budget and no kids on campus. So, <laughs> but having said that, God is amazing. And through Powerhouse Ministries uh, and our partnership with them, they said, we're gonna start an, a distance learning support program for these kids because at this point in time, many of you who have your own kids at home know it's really difficult to navigate so many different things about this distance learning. So um, what it now looks like is we have 11 elementary school children, all from Theodore Judah at Powerhouse on Market Street in one of the rooms, socially distanced, uh, and we have volunteers and staff there helping them from about 8.15 to two o'clock each day. And that looks like they're live teaching with their teachers helping them actually connect and get on and engage with their teachers. That was the first step. And then communicating with the school site to get their lunches. Mm -hmm. And then from about 12.30 to 2 each day, working on their asynchronous learning or their classroom work and communicating with the teachers about the fact that we have their kids there and how we can help support them. So that is wonderful. And that is an opportunity that I hear you would like to expand yes. if possible. Yes. So if walking alongside students is something you think you can do, we would love to have you volunteer with Powerhouse and Folsom's Hope to support kids through this really difficult time of learning at home. But that's not all you're doing. Folsom's Hope has a bigger vision yes. that you saw yeah. I know many years ago, and it is finally coming to fruition. So will you tell us about Folsom's Hope's future? Sure. So our future, again, one of the first things God showed me was a vision of a building. And back then, you know, almost 13 years ago, I didn't know what that meant. Um, and honestly, didn't tell people for a little while. <laughs> She's crazy. Um, 
but really over the course of a few months after he gave me that vision, he started to really speak to me about what this building was meant to be and what it's meant to be is a, a community center, a family resource center. So again, that's been a long journey, but uh, we are going to be doing a two-phased approach to building uh, just adjacent to Theater Judah on school district property, which is basically being given to us at no cost mm -hmm. to build on. Um, and we are going to have two buildings. One will be a student services building, which will house the after school program that we've been running at Theater Judah. And then the school district has a state-funded preschool for low-income families that is housed at Theater Judah currently, and we're going to be moving that into our building as well. So that will be our student services building. Um, so phase one of this building plan is all of the site work and the 4,800 square foot building. And then phase two will be our resource provider building, and we will bring into Folsom resource providers that can help address many of the needs that our families and students have right here in the city that they can't necessarily access in our city. Mm -hmm. so what are some of those resources? So, uh, some of those resources are uh, human services like Medi-Cal and CalFresh and signing up to receive governmental assistance. Um, a lot of those resources are parent education or birth and beyond, home visitation, those sorts of things where parents cannot access them here largely. So they're having to go to Rancho Cordova, having to go to Sacramento when they are lacking transportation mm -hmm. um, or other means to get to where they need to go. So, wonderful. Oak Hill is excited to partner with Folsom's Hope, um, not only through providing volunteers, but financially as well. And so we will be giving to this building project. And I would encourage you to uh, follow the link down below and you can get more information about their giving project and the building and how they'll be serving the community. Right now, do you want to tell us about the yes. exciting news about the community? Yeah, so we do currently have a donor um, willing to match up to $250,000 for the building specifically. So up to $250,000, anything that's given and that amount will be double, basically. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So it's a good time to give. Thank you for listening, and if you need more information about giving or volunteering with Folsom's Hope right now, please contact me.